Hello, welcome to Walk Through Show with me, Major Sunil Shetty. I am at India's largest prototyping center, based in Hyderabad, the T Works. This is spread over four acres, and this particular building is about seventy thousand square feet. And here, people come to create, explore, and experiment. Let's meet Anurag Veluri, who is the lead for partnerships here at T Works. Hey, Anurag. Hello, Major Sunil. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you. Thank for you. Asking. Thanks for inviting us. Wish no issues. Welcome to T Works. We're India's largest prototype. Oh yes, I know. I, I mean, when I heard of seventy thousand, now I know how it looks like, right? Yeah. It's huge. Yeah, it's pretty huge. Current building that you are in right now is called T Works Phase One, which is at seventy-eight thousand square feet, mm. and uh, we've got plenty of workshops here. We've covered plenty of materials, quite a lot of capabilities that, you know, more than seven hundred plus people have. You know, uh, benefited of so far, and uh, yeah, this space has been used by more than 250 startups, more than 100 SMEs, and quite a lot of rural innovators as well. Complete contrast, isn't it? There it is, like office, and here it's hardcore work happening, right. isn't it? Yeah. So I think this is a very strategic move as well because let's say you have a startup, they can pick their offices right there at T Hub, get accelerated, and if any of these startups are into product development, they could always. Walk down here. It's right at just to them, and yeah, they can start building products. Perfect. So let's go. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So we use multiple elements, multiple materials, which are again used in various sectors. All the materials and all the workshops in place that can be used by any sector, be it mobility, be it IoT, be it robotics, pretty much everything. Is it something like where people use a space and then they get they pay for it? Uh, they use it for a duration of time. Uh, is it for a project? How how does that dot work? That work. So there are plenty of models on which we are currently operating. So our vision is to create and celebrate a culture of hobbyists, makers, and innovators in India who explore and experiment without the fear of failure. Essentially, we are lowering barriers to prototyping by providing various services. A startup, or let's say anyone, could have a design ready, and they would like to use our equipment. They simply send their files to us, and we can give them a quotation for fabrication. The second one is. When they have very well fleshed out ideas, or let's say products that are, they are currently facing challenges with, they could approach us with problem statements, and our team can troubleshoot it for them, which is product design and development. So we have tied up with Mauser Electronics, which happens to be one of the largest electronics uh, retail platforms uh, on the internet right now. We could source components from them from other countries, and uh, this way we're actually able to bridge. The demand that is currently there in India, and if any of the manufacturers are unable to meet this demand, we can always help them with uh, sourcing. Is the metal and machine shop. This is the largest workshop in T Works Phase One, and over here we have all sorts of state-of-the-art equipment. So you have a section for metrology over here for precise measurement. Then you have a tool room over there, which is again for manually operated tools. Next. These two machines that you see are, let's say, some of the biggest assets that anyone could get access to. Now, these are CNCs. A CNC is nothing but a computer numeric control. So, we could take a look at what each of these machines are actually capable of making or producing. So, this machine right here is a five-axis vertical milling center. So, what you can do is, you can place a block of metal and input your design into the computer. So, based on the design you have provided. There are multiple nozzles or blades which cut this block of metal according to the design you have provided. So you can make quite a lot of intricate components with this. Something like this. I mean, somebody would send a plate like that, and then this is what would be created using the machine, right? Yes. So you have a block of metal which has already been placed in. So what happens is, once we have received your design, we're going to run the program which is going to machine this job for you. There are multiple blades which are going to be cutting the block of metal to obtain this. Design that you see. The solopreneurs, if they have their own idea, they could walk into a place yes. and come up with their own idea, build a product, and go out. Probably even colleges benefit out of that. Institutions. In fact, everyone, right from students, families, all the way to large enterprises. Of course, you have startups over here. We have a couple of prototypes that have been made or machined. What I'm holding right now over here, this is the base of a robotic arm that we had done for a startup. So the first one is actually Shrija's biopress. So Shrija is a ninth grade uh, student from Jogulamba Gadwal district of Telangana, and she's made these. So this is a biopod. Earlier she used to make about six or seven biopods using her hands, and uh, basically this is a very 
sustainable and a biodegradable alternative for the black sapling bags that you find in nurseries. So this is made using agricultural waste such as uh, groundnut shells, tamarind shells and a couple of binders here and there. To increase our output, we have developed this machine. So it has a heating coil, hydraulic press. You pour in your mixture and this mold actually designs the appropriate shape for the bio. So the reason we have a woodworking shop is again because we have users such as artists, we have users that are also hobbyists. And essentially we are also trying to incorporate wood as one of the materials used in prototyping. You can start off with enclosures, you can start off with casts, you can start off with plenty of products, then plenty of planers, quite a lot of this equipment which is pretty essential for working with wood. Then we've got two CNC routers and similarly we have a larger CNC router over here on which we've designed plenty of stuff. Uh, in fact, one of the products that we had worked on using this machine is the cradle. Now this cradle is a remarkable product. So this is one of the cradles that was designed here? Yes. So this is one of the products that we had developed in-house and the story behind this is pretty beautiful. One of our team members was expecting a child and he wanted a cradle that could be assembled and disassembled very quickly. So what you see here is a flat pack design, nothing but there's almost uh, no hardware involved. It's completely based on efficient design and joineries. So you can actually assemble this and disassemble this according to your needs. So once your child grows up, you can disassemble this, make it flat, stack it somewhere else. So the first one is laser cutting and engraving. And uh, this is actually a very economical and also a very fast route for working with acrylics or wood. Basically, we have laser cutters inside which are capable of producing objects like these. This is an enclosure for an electronics uh, piece. Now, what you see inside is an Arduino. Now, this is the enclosure which is made out of acrylic. What I'm holding here is actually the wing of one of the hybrid beetles that we have developed, a vertical takeoff and landing drone. So, this is made using balsa wood, completely laser cut. You would be shocked to see how lightweight this material is. Whoa! Whoa! This looks like I'm, as, as if I'm holding a wafer in my hand. <laughs> what we have here are two laser cutting and engraving machines. So we have a 120 watt CO2 laser cutter and an 80 watt CO2 laser cutter. So we'll be taking a look at how laser cutting happens. So for laser cutting and engraving, we receive files in the form of an SVG or a PDF format. And uh, we basically take a look at this, we review the design that you have provided coming out on the 120 watt laser cutter that we've got. And how much time does it take for a design to be cut? In fact, less than two or three minutes. So you can take a look at how my colleague is placing the design on the sheet of acrylic. So what kind of test can you simulate here? Right, so we have a thermal and humidity chamber over here which can, let's say, simulate various uh, levels of humidity. Similarly, various temperatures that range from minus 40 degrees centigrade all the way to 150 degrees centigrade. So you can take a look at it. It's currently at 100% relative humidity and regular 30.5 degrees centigrade. And you can see the PCB cluster that's been... And uh, 3D printing is, one, in fact, currently one of the most, uh, you know, highly in demand technologies, right? Uh, quite a lot of the world is shifting towards 3D printing. Yeah. Uh, and currently at T-Works, we have two technologies of 3D printing. One is fused filament fabrication and the other is stereolithography. So this line of 3D printers that you see are FFF 3D printers. So basically, you can take a look at this machine that is performing. This machine interprets the file you have given in its own way and it starts printing layer by layer. Pottery is one place where a lot of people come for hobby, right? Yes. So is it open for people who want to just come and play for a while? Definitely. In fact, soon we're going to be launching a couple of workshops where people could book a slot, let's say uh, for an hour, of, an hour of pottery or else uh, if they just want to understand the basics of pottery. You have various techniques involved in pottery, right from hand building mm. to wheel building. So many workshops that are still yet to come up. In fact, we have 
two more buildings according to the plans that are still yet to come up. In fact, from here, you can actually see the design of this building. So we've got this roof, translucent panels. So you get your natural sunlight and the entire building is lit up. Uh, this is a beautiful view of the building as well from the top. So we're going to be meeting Anand Rajagopalan, who's Director of Operations here at T-Works. Okay. Because that's, that's operation, I'm sure, is going to be one, one major challenge here, right? Yeah. Hey, Anand. Hey. How are you doing? Great. Good. Doing good. Doing good. Perfect. How was your tour? Oh, it was good, I must say. You know, thank you uh, for taking us around and giving us the opportunity. And seeing the space, uh, you know, seeing all the stuff that you see, you, one gets that feel, you know, why tea, uh, tea works is important, you know, why, what's happening here. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm very sure, you know, anybody who comes into this ecosystem, gets the feel of it, gets being part of it, kind of start thinking that he himself, he or she is also innovator. Absolutely, that's the idea. And that's why even the architecture of the place is as it is. I mean, we, we have a lot of glass walls and we want people to see what's happening within the facility. Um, it's very inviting. You don't see a lot of polards or home gates over here. Um, so, of course, I mean, we're getting a lot of inflow and we're trying to entertain everyone who's here. Um, and the idea is to inspire. We want to make manufacturing cool. We want to make building something with your hands cool. We want to make working on the shop floor cool. So, um, yeah, it's it's a long game. It's a 20, 30 year game to be able to create that kind of culture. I like that you keep saying we want manufacturing to look cool, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's how the environment also is. It doesn't look like a place where you have to go and sweat it out. Right. Yes, you do have to sweat it out. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you are working on how to make that look cool also. Yeah. Operationally, how challenging or how interesting it is? It's extremely interesting because um, traditionally, um, the industry uh, makes uh, revenues through mass manufacturing. So you take one part and you do it a thousand times, 10,000 times. The more times you repeat it, the more revenues you get. But here we do, I think we shipped our 2000 part recently. So every part we ship is different. So I think mm -hmm. the challenge is um, uh, because every part we make is different, it takes that much longer. Um, so that's one challenge to be able to churn out quickly. And as you know, I mean, uh, entrepreneurs, MSMEs, or any user for that matter, wants their part yesterday. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, temper expectations and trying to also meet their expectations or meet people. That's one challenge. The second challenge is also, as I think, as everyone faces, it's talent, and uh, we are working with our partners to be able to um, attract talent that uh, wants to be a part of a facility like this, uh, because it's extremely challenging, uh, both physically and mentally and uh, it's also extremely creative and that's why we have a few perks for people who come and work from here including you know we are one place where employees um, of course work on projects of eWorks but they also get to work on their own products they also get to work on their own startups and we don't expect to see anyone retire at eWorks you know we want them to work here for two years three years four years and then hopefully go on to startup and hopefully start up with a the product they built out of so, so I think that's what we're trying. To do. And 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 we want to see, you know, we will we'll be waiting to see that when you know products that has come out of you or the or the product that come out of T works end up becoming big businesses, successful businesses. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for hosting Thanks. us. To stay informed about the startup ecosystem, subscribe to my startup TV.